Alleluia. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name. You are worthy, Father. You are worthy of praise. You are worthy of all glory. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to our devotions for the 7th of October. Thank God that we are alive. Thank God that we are breathing this morning. We appreciate all of you that are joining us right now. Please, if you can help us by sharing the link to this devotion, we'd like to, to reach as many people as is possible. So just share the link with others. I'm doing the same right now as I am talking to you, making sure that um, we are sharing to others as well. So do your part as well. Uh, let us share the link to, to the devotions. And then we can be up and running. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for, for today. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you that this is the day that you have made. That, Lord, we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in this day. Thank you, Father, for waking us up. We do not take, Father God, this, this life for granted. We thank you, my God, that when others have not been able to get up this morning, as we are well, as we are alive, as we are at work, and so, Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that even as we begin to look into this word, that, Lord, may it be a word that is going to change us, my God, from the inside out, Father God. We do not want to remain, Father, the same that we have always been, but we want to change. We want to change. We want to grow, Father, in your things from glory to glory. And so we are praying this morning that, Lord, let your word change us. Let your word change us. Let your word separate us. Let your word, Father God, bring a difference in our lives. We thank you, Lord, and we bless you. Thank you, Father, this morning. You are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all honor. You are worthy of all glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you this morning. Come on, worship God just for a few uh minutes as we are waiting others to just join us just to uh, worship others uh, um, just worship the Lord as others are coming through to join us this morning. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, my God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor, my Father. There is none like you. There is none. Father, we can search for throughout all eternity and we shall find that there is none like you, my God. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to receive receive the praise. You are worthy to receive the honor. You are worthy, my God, to receive all the glory, Father God. And so, Father, from the death of our hearts, my God, to the highest throne of God, we say, Father, here we are. Speak to us this morning. Speak to us, my Father. Speak to us. Speak to us, Father God. Speak to us, my God. Speak to us. We are attentive. We are ready, my God, to hear from you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen and amen. Well, amen and amen. Wherever you are joining us from this morning, we thank God that indeed you are here with us. You are here with us. So thank you so much for, for taking time to just join us. I'm trying to get my notes and here are my notes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for wherever you are joining us. Wow, Sister Darlene, all the way from USA. And it's late there at night. I don't know what's the time. It's six o'clock. So it must be midnight that side. Thank you so much, my sister, for joining. Wow, this is sacrifice, taking time to join us. But thank you so much, even those joining from Botswana, from Zambia, from Kenya, from South Africa, wherever you are, you are most welcome. We are looking at the promises of God. We are in the month of October and we are looking at the promises of God. And I started off yesterday by 
saying that there are certain principles that we need to follow that God gives us. And once you follow the principle, once you follow the what you 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 follow the program, once you follow what God has uh, instructed you, most of the time the 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 promise will manifest and we are looking from proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 10 it's powerful there because it's got principles and then it's got promises as well so uh if i may just read it uh the bible reading from new king james says my son do not forget my law and because just because it says my son does not mean that if you are a daughter that you are exempted from following the law actually uh, a new living translation says my child so if you consider yourself to be a child, you will abide to this word. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For the length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart, verses 4. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, verses 6. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from him. It will be healthy to your flesh and strength to your bones. Verses 9, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So yesterday we looked at principle number one and two uh, and promise number one promise number two. So principle number one, we say it is found in Proverbs, uh, in, in, in verses one of Proverbs chapter three, and it says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. That is principle number one that we say and as you and you and as you follow the word of god as you 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 put into action into practice what he has said the promise that follows it is found in verses two it says for the length of days and long life and peace they will add to you god will add unto you long life peace he will add unto you as you follow his his word this uh the, the the promise of length of days and long life you know so this comes as a promise as you follow the word of god as you uh hold on to to, to the word as you walk in the word of god regardless of where you find yourself at and then we said the second principle is found in verses three. And we said, he, he says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Hmm? Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Now, mercy and truth forsaking you, that means the way you are living your life, the way you are conducting yourself, the way you treat people, all right? Mercy should not get frustrated and say, well, we don't want to have anything to do with you. Mercy and truth should not get frustrated with you and say, oh, well, you have chosen this way of life, of living. So go on, we will leave you. But the way you conduct your life, you must have mercy. You must show compassion to people. You know, and most of the times we don't want to extend mercy to others. We don't want to extend compassion, but we just want to receive. But the word of God is saying, let mercy and truth forsake, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. In other ways, put them around your neck. Wear it like a necklace. All right. You should be a person who will tell the truth. Come what may. Even if say telling a lie is, is 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 protecting you, you should be a person that tells the truth. And I said, some people lie so much such that they begin to trust, they begin to believe their lies. They don't even know now what is truth from not truth. They lie so much. And the problem with lies is once you say this thing, you have to remember tomorrow to cover it. You have to cover one thing after the other to cover a lie. But once you say the truth, ah, you are free. You are free. You don't have to worry about remembering what it's the truth. So you have got to say the truth and then write them on the tablet of your heart. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Guard your heart. Protect your heart. 
And then the promise uh, there is found in verses four, which says, so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. As you do these things, this is what is gonna follow you, favor. Favor that is not fair. Favor is not fair. People ask you, how did you manage this? And you will be able to testify that it's a favor of God. And we all know that the favor of God is not fair. As you follow the word of God, as you do what you can do, Sister Fazai, as you follow the word of God, people will think you will find favor before God and people. People, God will, will make sure that you are brought into a place where people treat you with favor and high esteem. That's what we learned. All right, so now today we are carrying on with principle number three. That's where we are. In case you are just joining us, we are looking at Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three, and we are going through from verses one to verses 10. We are looking at the promises of God, but we need to understand that there are principles that we need to follow in order for us to, fall, to, to receive the promises of God. That's what we are walking through. And just here in Proverbs chapter three, our, our principles and promises, it's powerful, powerful, powerful. I said the book of Proverbs uh, is difficult to, to understand. It's not just a story, but you've got to, to learn to, to read the book of Proverbs. Read one chapter a day, one chapter a day, and try and see what principles are there, what promises are there, or what is that word that you find there in that Proverbs? How is it ministering unto you every single day? I've made it a point that I read one chapter of Proverbs. So today is the 7th of October, so I'm reading uh, Proverbs chapter 7. So on each day, I'll read the corresponding pro, uh, Proverbs for that day. So that's how I've learned to, to read uh, the book of Proverbs and to try and apply it in my life, to do everything in my power to apply it in my life. So we are on uh, the third um, uh, pr principle now. So the third principle, and we, we look at it in verse number five. And it is, it's a principle, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And the first part of verse six also goes with this. It says, in all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Well, this deals with or it highlights or focuses on the fact that we cannot be dependent on our own understanding. You and I cannot be dependent upon our own understanding, Sister Lillian. We cannot walk by our own opinion, Sister Veliswa. And this is what messes up most of the people that I know. Most people in life, you find that they are messed up, Sister Tisa. Why? Because they've been leaning upon their own understanding. We cannot walk by our own opinion. You have got to hear this. You cannot, Sister Sharon, walk, Charlotte, walk by your own opinion. And this is what messes up people. This is what messes up families. This is what messes up what marriages. It messes up people leaning on your own understanding. No, you are trying to figure out why one plus one is two. It's already there. But you're trying to understand it in your own way, Sister Deline. So what the word is saying, you know, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Hmm? I've always said, whatever I ever said, I have always said that understanding can wait, but obedience can't. Understanding can wait, but obedience can't. So if you are going to stay there and try and figure out why you must understand this situation, well, you are wasting your time. You are going to mess up your life. You have got to trust in the Lord. You, you just say, I don't understand this thing, dear Lord, but I'm throwing it to you. You will take care of this. Because I don't want to mess up my, my life. I don't want to mess up my business. I don't want to mess up my marriage. I don't want to mess up my family. Your understanding cannot compare with God's understanding. Did you get that? 
Your understanding cannot compare to God's understanding, Sister Joanna. Finish and clap. In fact, God says in Isaiah 55, which we all know, Isaiah 55, he says, my ways are not your ways. He says that. My ways are not your ways. He says that. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Hmm? His ways are not my ways. My thoughts are not his. You know, if, if you have a challenge, I've learned in my life, if I have a situation, and most of the time, you know, I, I, I kind of even lose it or I mess up sometimes because I have, I'm trying to understand it from my own. So if you have a challenge, I've, I've, I've learned this in my life and I use it and I'm going to just give it to you. Maybe you can try and apply it also in your life. If you have a challenge, try and figure out how you would do it, how you'd, you'd sort it out, how you'd get out of it, this challenge. Try and just think how I'm going to get out of this mess. And then once you have the answer, how you would figure it out, make 180 degrees. Make 180 degrees. That would probably be the direction that God would take you. All right? Because his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So when my flesh tells me to get out of this situation is this way, I make 180, not a 360. When you make a 360, you are back to your, 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 your resolution. But once you make 180, you have gone the direction probably that God would let you go. All right? Why? He doesn't think like us. God doesn't think like, like us. He doesn't act like us. He doesn't function like us. He doesn't rule like us. He doesn't walk like us. His thinking, his concepts, his principles are different from ours. Different, completely different. And then he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. What is he saying? Stop depending on your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own thinking. Stop depending on your heart, trust in the Lord. He's saying, he's saying this, this is powerful. He's saying you are going to mess up your life by leaning on what you think. What you think you should do, Sister Joanna. What you think you must do, Mom Philomena and Papa. What you think, but it says trust in the Lord. The scripture says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Take refuge. That's what the word trust means. Trust, take refuge. That's what it means. You know, it means have confidence. It means be sure in the Lord, in his ways, in his word. Think, think, look out, go down and look at your life and think about the decisions that you have made and how did that work out for you? When I was looking at this and I was looking at the decisions that I've made in my life and I'm like, how did that work out for me? Did God give me that decision or was it my own flesh telling me what to do? So I challenge you, Sister Sarah, that go down, go, go down, look at your life. The, the decisions that you have made, every one of us, you're listening to me this morning. Go back and look at the decisions that you have made in your, in your life. How did that work out for you? Did God instruct you to do, to make that decision? How did that work out? And I'm sure some of those decisions you have made, you know, have not been the best. I am sure they have not been the best, but the power of the word of God says in all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge him, acknowledge him. What does it mean? Recognize God, observe God in all your ways, in every way, in every decision that you make, every decision, every act. Every course of action, the job that you take, the person that you have decided to marry, in every decision, in every decision, there is no decision whereby you can say, this I can make on my own. I'm exempted to consult God. There is nothing like that. In every decision, that person that you are dating, that you are going to marry, are, are you of the same faith or have you decided once we get married, I'll bring them to the Lord? Well, you are being deceived because not every person that you get out of your faith will come to the Lord. You must be careful there. If the person is in, wants to come to the Lord, let them come to the Lord on their own, not because they want to marry you. Hallelujah. 
So that decision, that job, that business, that, that thing, that community that you are interacting in, you are living in, the purchases that you make, you know, the things that we buy, the relationships that we develop in all your ways, it says acknowledge the Lord in all your ways all your ways there is no exemption as to which area you can just go ahead and make your own decisions so this is principle number three and the promise the promise is just there in verse six it says he shall direct your path mm. he shall direct your path i love that he shall direct your path so if your path if your paths are not being directed by God, if you don't know where to go, get this? If you don't know where to go, if you don't know what's your next move, you might need to go back. You might need to go back and see which one of these principles, particularly this one, have you violated? Hey, Jesus. Which one of the principles of God have you violated? Where in your life did you not trust in the Lord? Where in your life did you not trust in the Lord, Sister Katie? Where in your life did you lean to your own understanding? Because most of the times when we have made decisions without consulting God, they have backfired, they have backfired, I've seen it in my life, I've messed up, whereby I have made a decision I didn't consult. Maybe you have just carried somebody just because they are your chummy and you have carried them, come on, let's do this business together. I've, maybe you have just carried people in your ministry and say, let's do just because they are friends, you, they are your chummy, your friends, just because they are your friend does not mean that they have got also the calling that God has given they don't the vision that's why you're having trouble they are not supporting you because you just trusted in your own understanding you didn't pray about it you went along with it you didn't consult god and now you are in a mess where did you not trust in the lord we are looking at the promises of god in the month of october and in order for us to walk in the promises of God, we need to abide what his word says. We need to follow his word. We need to live in his word. There are principles that come, that the instructions that he gives us that we need to follow. So where in your life did you lean to your own understanding? Where in your journey did you not, did you not acknowledge God? Where in your journey did you not acknowledge God? Because somewhere down along the path, when you don't know which way to go, what to do, which job to take, which person to get in, uh, in close contact with, where somewhere down along the path, when you don't know which course to be on, you have somewhere or some other not trusted in the Lord. You have trusted in your own understanding. You have leaned on your own understanding or you didn't acknowledge him. You didn't acknowledge him. It's so simple and clear. There is no parables to this one. It is so simple. It is so straightforward. It just means that we have to stop leaning to what we think and what we believe and what our hearts want to do. We have got to trust in the Lord, not in your heart, because our hearts can be wicked at times, desperately wicked. So you cannot trust or your, your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Your trust should be in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. I love this. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And I love this. He shall direct your path. He will give you a straight path. He shall direct your path. That means he will give you a straight path. The word direct means it will be straight path. It will be a straight path right to where you need to go. Ah, I love this. Right to where you need to go. He will take you right to the place that is in the best interest of your heart. The place that is in your best interest of your heart, right to the place he wants you to go, my sister, my young sister, Ida, right to that place where you need to go, right directly to where is the best effort for your life. 
You remember God only wants the best for you and for me. So I don't know about you, but I want to live my life under the direction of God. I want to live my life under the direction of the Holy Spirit. I want God directing every course and every decision that I make. I have discovered when he's directing the course and he's calling the shots in my life, when he's ordering my path, my life is so much better. My life is so much better. I can go back over my life and think through so many things that God has worked out and doors he has opened and doors he has closed. Even he has directed my path everywhere. Those that he has, has shut can be, can, be, can, be, can be painful. You are crying and you are crying, you are crying. But the door has been shut. So then what do you do? Do you go start force, forcing that door to open up? You know, you can see the door has been shut. There is a padlock. There is a chain. It's been shut. Do you go and break it open down? I was saying to someone who are discussing, you know, where we are at and what the ministry needs and all the things that we are, we, are, we are facing. And the person was asking me, do you ever want to go back to work? To go and work for somebody? I said, really, I'm working for God. I wouldn't want to go back to work. But it doesn't mean that I have not been applying for jobs. I do apply. I go online, apply, apply. Here yeah, I do because the only reason I'm doing that is because I'm carrying a ministry. We've got bills, we've got all this and so forth. The church that we run, we, you all know we run a church in a very poor community. And when we, we put together what we have received as our, our tithe and our offering, it's very little money. It can barely even pay the rent. You know, it's very, very little money. So I would want, yes, to, to get into employment just because I would like to have, you know, uh, what is it? Our bills are paid, you know, uh, also to sustain my family, to help, you know, uh, my husband with all our, our, our bills at home. So it's just for the sake of that. But, and I say to them, but what I have seen is every, it's like the, the door has been shut. It's like there's padlocks, there's all sorts of things because every now and then I'll hear somebody says, oh, send me the CV. And then when I send it, I don't hear anything. So is it that I'm not qualified? I don't know. All right. Uh, there are people that have worked with me. They have said, no, come, we'll do this. I do, I send it, nothing. So it's like as though the door has been shut. I don't, I don't, I don't stop. I still, you know, yesterday I was looking at uh, somebody else, another company that wrote to me and said, no, 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 we won't go ahead with your application. And I'm like, okay, can you please give me a reason? I would like to know what's the reason, you know, so we'll see what's the reason. But it's like the door has been shut. Now, is it shut? Is it shut? Are there chains? Are there padlocks? Should I go and force it open? Hey, I don't know. But here it is, you know. I thank God that he is directing my life, even though they, 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 there's regrets and there's no, uh, what is it? There is no uh, responses. I am at peace. He has ushered into the domain of my life a peace, a peace that no one can understand. You know, I know because, you know, I make my, 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 my business every day to try and trust in the Lord every single day. I make it a must and it's my business that I must trust in the Lord and not to lean on what I, I think I ought to do or what I it, it, it should be done. And, you know, and I acknowledge him every single day. I try what, you know, I, I try to acknowledge God. What would God want me to do in this situation? That's where I am at. What direction does he want me to go? What's his will? for me what is his will for my for my family for the ministry work that he has called me into what is his will what does he do his word say about it so i am challenging all of us this morning you have been listening to me let us try and acknowledge god the fourth one in verses seven which i will be our last one for today the fourth one do not be wise in your own eyes Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Principle number four. Verse seven. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't be wise. Don't think that you know everything. 
Have you ever met some people, Sister Lynn, that think they know everything? You can't tell them everything. They just know everything. He said, don't be wise. Don't be wise based on what your opinions are. Don't be wise, Sister Teresa, based on what your opinions are. When people say to you, oh, you know, I've, I've come across people, when people come to say, oh, you are so wise, you're full of wisdom. When people say to you, you're a wise person, you have got to understand that it's not your wisdom that you dispel. It's not your wisdom that you dispel. It's the wisdom of God. It's a wisdom of God. I think differently because I try to train my thinking and I try to displace the thinking of God and not my own. This is a reason why you can make those wise choices. It's not your own, it's God's wisdom. This is what the scripture says. Don't depend on, your, on, on your how you view life. Mm -hmm. Don't depend on how you view life. That's what wisdom means. Look like, look, look at life at the vintage point from which and how. Don't look at life from the vintage point of you, but look at life at how uh, from the vintage point of God, if I can put it that way. What this is saying is don't look at life from your own views, your own point of view. You, 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 if you look at life from your own point of view, from your own vintage point, when something bad happens, when something ha bad happens, or when some horrific action occurs, or if something painful, some ordeal, some painful ordeal, it comes in your way, is instituted in your way, in your life, you will somehow feel God is not fair. Because why? You have been looking at life from your own point of view. So when the storms of life come, you start saying God is not fair. You start blaming God. But here's what I discovered from the wisdom of God. When I look at life from God's point of view, from God's vintage point, if I, if, 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 I, if I can go up, you know, if I can just be where God is up there in the air, look down on my circumstances, here's what I've learned. That when I look at life from God's point of view, he's got something bigger planned. He's got something bigger planned in place for me. That if he has allowed me to go through this painful ordeal, that is if he has allowed me to face this terrible thing, this painful thing, if he has allowed something to happen in my life, there is something good that is going to come out of it. This is how I have learned to look at life. If I am going through this challenge, if I am going through these things that I'm facing right now, that means God has allowed it to happen because I have learned in my life that nothing will enter the domain of my life that God has not signed off on. Nothing, nothing, there is nothing. Whatever enters, whatever comes in the domain of my life, the enemy has got to get permission. He has got to ask for permission. Is it okay that this can happen to this one? And God says, go ahead. First, God looks at me and he knows and he trusts me that he has put inside of me so much that, that even if doors of employment are shut, I will still save him. I will still praise him. I will still worship him. Even though the bank account is empty, I will still worship God. He knows it. So God will trust. He has got so much trust. He's got so much faith. So whatever I have gone through, Whatever I have gone through, I don't look at it with my lenses, my, my, my eyes. I look at it with the lenses of God's eyes. I look at it from the vintage point of God. And I have learned, Brother Samuel, that once I do that, I can then begin to praise God. I can then begin to worship God. Because Romans 8, 28, what does it say? It says, and we know that all things work together for, for good to those who love 
love God. That's what it says. To those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. If you've been called according to his purpose, wherever you are facing right now, wherever you are, it is for your own good. And so whatever it is that you are going through, it might be so painful, it might be so unbearable. The mere fact that God has allowed, the mere fact that you are going through it, it means God has allowed it to enter the domain of your life. You have got to begin to worship God. You have got to begin to praise God. In the midst of the fire, just like the three uh, Jewish boys, you have got to begin to worship God because he's always there by your side. Regardless of what comes in your life, I know somehow one way or the other is going to bring good out of it. There is something good that is God that God is working on. Yes. There is something good, huh? It rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Yes, it rains on those who are good and those who are bad. Yes, things happen. But the difference is when you love God, when you love the Lord Jesus, when you are in love with God, my dear sister Chomba, when you are in love with God, he uses it to help bring out the plan that he has for your life. The plan that he has for your life to accomplish his purposes, to get you to a place he wants you to go. That's what does. That's what God does. That's wisdom of God. He says, don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes eyes brother master because if you go by what your eyes see you will get bitter hmm? you will get mad you will get upset am i talking to somebody this morning you won't understand you want to walk away from god if you go looking at things with your own understanding you know you you, you don't lean upon your own understanding You want to trust God in all you do. Instead, fear the Lord. He says, fear the Lord. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The passage, uh, the, the principle there says, fear the Lord. That doesn't mean that I'm afraid of God. The word fear means I revere God. I reverence God. Okay? I revere God, I reverence God. I know that I will give him the respect that is due to him because he is the eternal God. I am not afraid of God. I am reverencing him as God. That's what this is saying. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't be wise in your own eyes, but whatever may happen in your life, give reverence to God. It is saying give reverence to God because he has a purpose and a reason behind whatever it is that you are going through. Whatever it is that you are facing, whatever it is that you are doing, I feel like shouting right there because whatever it is that you are facing right now, there is a bigger picture behind. You can, you, can, you can shout there because there is a bigger picture behind. And this is true. I know this is the will of God. And then I love it. It says, depart from evil. Depart from evil. I like the word right there, depart. Because what it, it means in Hebrew, the word depart means turn it off. Turn it off. That's what it means. Turn it off. You got to learn to turn off evil. We all have a desire to do something that we don't have business doing. We have that desire to do uh, something that you don't want to do. You tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm saying it now. Your flesh wants you to do this. You know, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hmm? So let's tell the truth and shame the devil. It says, don't do evil. Turn it off. Turn off the switch, switch it off. 
turn the switch off, to put it in the off position. I don't know how to even explain, but it's clear there. Depart from it, get away from it, turn it off. That's what he's saying. Stop being attracted to it. Stop feeding on it. Stop walking down that road. Stop go doing it. Stop engaging in it. Stop thinking about it. Stop wanting it. Stop pondering on it. Stop planning for it. Turn it off. Depart from evil. That's what it says. And when you do this, when you do this, the promise here is found in verses 8. What is a promise? It will be healthy to your flesh and strength to your bones. That's the promise. It will be healthy to your flesh and strength to your bones. You don't depend on your own wisdom. You fear God. You have, you have reverence for him and you depart from evil. And the very fact that you do that, the promise says it will bring you health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Mm? The word health means you will get the cure. Mm. You will get the cure. There is so many things that I have been sick from. But God has always come through. Maybe I could have even been sick of something, but God came through before I even knew of the disease. Why? Because you are turned away from evil. So God will make sure that you get the cure. You never even knew that you were sitting right next to this disease. The enemy was trying to bring this disease. But before you even learned about it, God already cured you. God is able to do what he says in his word. I am giving him praise about this. He will cure you. He will bring health to you. I love that pas passage. That's the promise from God. We say the God that is awesome. When you put in place what he says, when you don't look at life in the wisdom of your own eyes, and when you learn to fear him, when you, when you reverence him, when you depart from evil, he will bring health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That's what he promises to do. So there we go. I'm going to stop here and we'll follow, we'll finish up uh, with this passage on, on, on Monday with the last principle. Uh, um, um, yeah, we'll finish up with the last principle on Monday. We're going to look at verses nine. That's where we are going to pick up from. So I hope that you have learned something from what we have discovered so far. We have discussed so far. If you have missed the devotions, uh, please go back and start looking at them from two. I don't know. When did we start this? We started this, this one on the uh, um, promises of God, the principles of God to follow. We started this one yesterday, but I mean, even Tuesday and Wednesday, we had a powerful word. So if you missed the devotions, go back and look at what we have looked at uh, so far. We have looked at four principles and four promises. We have looked at principle number one, uh, have the word of God, have the law of God, keep his command, keep his, his, his word, you know, and then the length of your days and your life, there will be added and peace will be added to you. That's a pro principle and the promise, the length of your days and your, you have long life. We have looked at the second uh, principle, which was do not, let not mercy and truth um, forsake you, bind it on your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, have mercy, show compassion towards people, wear mercy and truth as a necklace, tell the truth, regardless of where you are, tell the truth, and when you do that, you have favor and high esteem in the sight of God and in the sight of man, that is what we have said, and the third one, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, and in your all your ways acknowledge the lord that is what we said is a third uh, a principle that goes and then the promise says he shall direct your path he will give you direction and then we said number the fourth principle here was in verse seven do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and depart from evil um and that's what we said was the fourth one. And we, we have also quoted Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good. Whatever you are going through, just know that all things work together for good. It might be painful. You may not understand it, but God knows exactly what he's doing. And the promise is that you will have health. 
you will have health to your flesh and strength to your bones. That's what we have looked at today. We shall continue on Monday. We love you. We appreciate you for continuing to, 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 to pray for us, for continuing to support us, for doing everything you have been doing, for helping us to take the word of God everywhere. We really appreciate this. We don't take it for granted. Remember, we don't meet over the weekend. We meet in Mondays to Friday on this same platform. We also meet on YouTube. We are just having a chat challenge right now with our our, our our platform, but I, I believe that God will sort it out. So YouTube have been, has been coming, have, having a broadcast after we are done, but it will be sorted out soon. I'm trusting God that it will be sorted out soon such that we are back on our, our usual platform. We appreciate you. We, we speak the favor of God upon you. We speak the blessings of God upon you that even as you go through this weekend, that it shall be a good weekend for you and for your, uh, for your loved ones. It's very hot in Muzanzi, we are facing high temperatures, 32 degrees. Make sure that you are drinking as much water as is possible. And uh, yeah, just uh, be safe out there. This has been Pastor Mary Mlenga from Missions and Mason Ministries. And I am saying shalom, shalom. <laughs>